Hey, good morning to you, my Generations Church online family. I'm so thankful that you've chosen to join us on this Sunday morning in this online format. You know, this is a unique season for our church because in person, we're in the middle of an At The Movie series. And so we've done that now the last few weeks. Today concludes that series in person. But because of licensing issues with the content that we're using during this series, we're not able to stream it to you. And so our team wanted to create an online experience just for you, uh, this online church community. And so we're so thankful that you choose to spend part of your Sunday here with us. Last week was such a great week. Uh, We heard from Pastor Trevor and Garrett, and they presented to us the story of Job, that challenging Old Testament story. Uh, But I'm thankful that we're not too scared to tackle tough stories. We're not we're not scared to go into stories that sometimes leave open-ended kinds of questions because that's really what faith and life is about is really digging into those places of trusting God when we don't always see a neat little bow wrapped around all the details. And so I'm thankful for what they shared last week and how they really challenged us. And I'm praying that God uses that message to change us as well. And so today is the conclusion of this Old Testament Heroes of the Faith series. And I'm excited about the message that you're going to hear in just a few minutes. But we're going to jump into a time of worship. And as I have said just about every week now at this point, uh, I encourage you to make this a participation experience. It's not just something that's noise in the background. This is an opportunity for you to worship. Worship out loud. Sing it. Even if it's with a whisper, go ahead and sing it and participate. And let's worship together even as we're spread out amongst, among so many different places. So we'll jump into worship, and I'll be back in just a few minutes. To fall like lightning I saw darkness run for cover But the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven I believe in signs and wonders I have resurrection power
I know that is because I'm human too. And in this human experience that we're living, life doesn't always work out the way that we want it to. There are things that are taking place in your life and in mine that are through no circumstances of our own, through no fault of our own. We didn't choose them. Things are happening around us. And sometimes that puts stress and strain on us. And the complexity of life causes us to look for solutions outside of ourself. And when I come to moments like this, when I'm in my healthiest place, it causes me to turn to Jesus. And it's not just to turn to Jesus in relationship, it's to turn to Jesus in prayer. And so right now, we want to offer you the opportunity to know that someone else is joining you in prayer. And so if you have any need right now, anything, it's no, there's nothing too big, nothing too small that you want us to be praying about, I encourage you to email us at prayer at g.church. When you email us, we're going to pray over that need. We're going to present that need to our elders so that they can be praying as well, unless you ask us not to. But I promise you that there's going to be a team of people that are joining with you, calling on the strong name of Jesus Christ over whatever it is that you're asking God to do on your behalf. And so I'm thankful for us as a church family, even as we're spread out and through technology being connected in the different places that we find ourselves today, to be able to trust God in this way. There's a couple of things we want you to know about right here in this moment of our service. Again, we're in week three. We're concluding our Old Testament Heroes of the Faith series And so I'm excited for the message that you're going to hear in just a minute. Pastor Trevor, who's our administrative pastor, he's been a part of the teaching team each of these last two weeks. And today he is presenting a message on his own uh, about another Old Testament hero of the faith. Uh, A man that you may not be quite as familiar with. His name is Benaiah. And this is a great story that will grow your faith, challenge your faith, but really call you to something that requires great faith, to risk and to have courage And there's a great book called In a Pit with a Lion on a Snowy Day by Pastor Mark Batterson, who is one of my favorite authors. But I encourage you today to lean in, allow God to speak to your heart today as Pastor Trevor delivers us week three of this Old Testament Heroes of the Faith series. Hey, good morning. My name is Pastor Trevor Hyman. I'm the administrative pastor here at Generations Church. I'm really thankful that you chose to join us for worship today at Generations Church online for our online campus. You know, we're so thankful that you've been a part of what we are doing here at Generations Church. And so I just wanted to just thank you so much for being a part of this kind of three-week series that we've been doing, really just kind of spending some time looking at some Old Testament um, characters of the Bible. Two weeks ago, Pastor Aaron and myself looked at King David and really just talked about the idea of being a man after God's own heart or a woman after God's own heart. Last week, myself and Garrett Snyder, one of our creative um, people on staff, he and I talked about um, Job and just kind of really how to stay faithful even in some tough times when we face trials and go through some things. Um, And so, man, it was such a powerful time last week of looking at that. And so today, we're going to do one more kind of character study here in the month of March. We're doing At the Movies on campus. Um, And so I'm really just kind of, I've, I've loved spending some time with these guys over the last several weeks just getting into God's word with you. And so today we're going to do the same. I'm going to read out of 2 Samuel chapter 23, and I'm going to read one verse of scripture here. And it's a really powerful verse. And it's honestly, to me, one of the most interesting and captivating stories in all of scripture that's kind of just passed over like it didn't really happen and that it's not a big deal, whereas I feel that it is a huge deal. 
And so we're going to look at this. And make the character in the story that we're looking at today is Beniah. And Beniah isn't famous. And if you're listening, you may not have ever even heard of him. And if you haven't, that's okay. It's not like you've not read your Bible thoroughly. You can read your Bible very thoroughly and skip past him and not even really realize that you've read about Beniah. And so Beniah is, is a really cool character in my opinion. There's a book that I've read um, about him. It's called In a Pit with a Lion on a Snowy Day. It's a powerful book. It's a great book. And so if you haven't read that, it's by Pastor Mark Batterson. You can, you can pick that up on Amazon, anything like that. But that's kind of, this is the story that he really pulls that book from. And so I want to read in 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 20. It says, Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, a valiant fighter come from Kabzeel, performed great exploits. He struck down Moab's two mightiest warriors. Now that in and of itself is pretty impressive that this, that this guy named Benaiah was able to strike down two of Moab's greatest and mightiest warriors. Like we already know that this is a pretty powerful guy. This is a pretty impressive fighter. But then this one sentence is so intriguing to me in scripture. And this is what it says. He also went down into a pit on a snowy day, and killed a lion. Like, what? Like, that doesn't even make sense. Like, it's like this afterthought. It's like, oh yeah, and it just says, he also went down, like, no big deal. He went down into a pit on a snowy day and killed a lion. I remember several years back, it's been probably 10 years ago now, I had the opportunity and the honor to go on a mission trip to South Africa. And it was incredible. It's a beautiful country and beautiful people. And just God was doing incredible things and is doing incredible things through some of the missionary partners in South Africa and some of the churches that are happening down there. And one of the really cool things about the trip outside of the ministry element was we got to go on several safaris. And safaris are nothing like going to the zoo. They're incredible. I got out of a vehicle one time and walked within 10 or 15 feet of cheetah. Like it was awesome. And you're in this vehicle and there's no fence and there's no cage between you and another animal and an animal that could kill you and probably, if we're honest, really wanted to kill you. And I remember being on this missions trip, and one of the rules, especially when we saw the lions, was don't make any sudden moves. Because when they see the vehicle, evidently, and I don't know if it's true or they just tell dumb tourists from America this to make us feel better, but what they told me and what they told our whole group is that they don't have great eyesight. They can smell well, they can see, but they don't have very great eyesight. And so because of that, when they kind of see this vehicle rolling up, they kind of view all of us jointly together as one large object. And so what they told us is don't make any sudden movements, don't stand up, because if you do, it kind of isolates you as a target that the lion views as small enough to now be able to take out. Well, I didn't want any part of that. And so I'm sitting in the vehicle. And I remember when we finally found the pride of lions, one of the days that we saw the lions. And we're there. And they're incredible creatures. They're massive. They're strong. They're, they're vicious looking. They're terrifying. And so all I'm armed with is my camera and one of my friends sitting next to me that I could just kind of shove out if any lion came at me. And so I'm sitting there with my camera, and I remember the guy sitting right in front of me. One of the lions kind of went down this little ravine, and he wanted to try to stand up to be able to get a better picture. And I remember all I could think of was the rule that we were supposed to follow of don't stand up. And I reached up, and I grabbed the guy, and I pulled him down, and I was like, sit down and don't move. Because I did not want to have to face a lion. I didn't want to have to fight a lion because I knew if I fought a lion, I know who would win that victory. The lion would destroy me. And so here we are looking at this story and we're looking at a man who, yeah, we know he's a mighty warrior because he two, killed two of Moab's mightiest warriors. But I feel like it's a totally different animal, no pun intended, when you have to then go and fight a lion. Like, that's a big deal to be somebody that's willing to take on a lion. And so there's three things that really kind of stand out to me in this story about Ben and Aya that are just such powerful statements when it comes to us and our having to fight our enemy. Because every single one of us have an enemy that wants to kill us, wants to steal from us, and wants to destroy us. 
And so we might not have to fight a very literal lion in the sense, but we do all every day have to fight an enemy that wants to destroy us. And so if we have to fight this enemy, I think there's three things that we can find from the story of Benaniah that are powerful each and every one of, to each and every one of us. And it all comes from that one sentence. He also went down into a pit on a snowy day and killed a lion. One, he went to the lion's turf. You know, sometimes we have to take our fight to our enemy. We can't just sit back on our heels and play defense. You know, I remember my senior year of high school, I played on the um, high school basketball team. And play is a bit of a stretch. I did a lot of bench sitting um, and ran a lot of... I ran a lot of suicides in practice, and that was kind of the extent of my playing basketball. But one of the things that was so important was you can't play defense on your heels, and sometimes you have to play offense. And I think what we're seeing here in this story is that I don't know what caused Ben and I to have to do this, but there was for some reason the, the this decision was made in his head that I had to take the fight to the lion. Like, I couldn't sit back and just play defense and wait on the lion to potentially attack me. Like, he went down into a pit. Like, when I think of pit, I think of somewhere that a lion would go to sleep. Like, I'm thinking like a lion's den. I'm thinking like a cave. I'm thinking like this deep ravine that it's the lion's home field advantage. And so the lion's got this home field advantage, but Ben and I decides I got to go on offense. And I think it's so important to us for us to recognize that sometimes there are opportunities that we got to sit back and we got to play defense. But I definitely think that there are moments of our life and there are moments of our faith journey that for you, that for I, that for our church, that for your friends, that for your spouse, that for your kids, whatever it might be, that for you in your faith journey, that you have to go on offense, that you have to go places and you have to fight the enemy on the enemy's turf, you can't just sit back and hide in your home at all times. You can't just sit back and just wait. And I'm sitting in a safe church building as I record this. Like you can't just always show up to church. Sometimes there are moments of our lives that we must go to the lion's turf. And I think that's the first important thing that stands out to me from that one sentence of Ben and I, is that he went to the lion's turf. The second thing that stands out to me is that when he went, the conditions weren't great. Like, he didn't wait for the perfect day, and he knew he'd have the perfect footing. Like, it was nice and dry and 75 degree. Like, it's so specific and says that he went down into a pit. We already talked about that, going to the lion's turf, on a snowy day. Like, I remember times that it snowed. I remember times that it's iced. I remember the uh, snow apocalypse that happened in Atlanta several years back where the world was kind of shut down around here. And none of the roads were passable, and there were people for days and for hours stranded on the interstate or on roads, and they were abandoning their car, and they were having to walk, all because there was some snowy, icy conditions on the road. And I can remember that there was a moment that there was someone stranded that was going to our church at the time, and they were within walking distance of a house that I was staying at. I was actually house-sitting for some friends at the time. And I remember he was within walking distance of where I was, but he had been at work, and so he was not in, like, snowshoes. And I remember he struggled to walk with me back into the neighborhood of the house that I was at because he wasn't equipped for it. And if I think about what it would be like to go down into a pit on a snowy day to face a lion, like, I feel like all of the odds are stacked against Benaniah here, like, I would imagine that the claws on the lion's paws would give the lion a little bit more of a sure footing than whatever sandal contraption Ben and I and or like boot thing, whatever they had thousands of years ago to wear. I don't know that he had like hiking and climbing boots that were like specifically designed in a lab with science backing it to give him the proper traction and footing for this battle with a lion. And so he's going in to the lion's place, to this pit, on the lion's turf, in really, really poor conditions. And I have to think to myself, like, what, why did he choose that day? Why of any day of the year, 365 days, like, to my knowledge, I don't think that Ben and I was living in, like, Antarctica or anything, where it was always snow on the ground. And so I ask, my question when, I ask myself the question when I'm reading this story, why did he choose a snowy day? Like, why did he choose that moment to go and to fight a lion? And if I can be really honest with you, I don't have the answer. 
I don't know, like I know you're probably sitting there saying, oh, that is a good question. I can't wait for Pastor Trevor to tell me the answer. I don't know that I have an answer. But I can think of times in my life that I've not been able to just wait around for the perfect conditions for me to have to face something. I can remember times in my life where a family member or a close loved one has had a really bad report from a doctor. And I think to myself, God, like, why now? Like, why is the timing right now that I have to fight this battle? I can remember times that I've gone through something in my personal life and the conditions weren't right. I wasn't equipped for the battle. I didn't have the proper, if you will, footwear to go into that situation. And I think if we can learn anything from the story of, of that little phrase, on a snowy day, is that we can't always just have the perfect condition when we have to fight our enemy. Like if our enemy wants to kill from us and steal from us and destroy us, then I think you and I have to be prepared daily for battle. Like we have to pick up our cross daily and kind of try to be the best version of ourselves that we can be that day. And there's some days that it's going to be perfect conditions and we're going to have huge successes. And there's going to be some days that we have to fight the enemy and it's 75 and dry and sunny. But unfortunately, there's going to be some days that we have to go to the lion. And we have to face the lion and we have to face our enemy on, on the enemy's ground and on the enemy's turf. And sometimes we're going to have to do that, and it's going to be icy, and it's going to be slippery, just like it is outside when, when it gets below freezing, and it snows, and it's slippery, and you, you're trying to get to your car, and you slip down the stairs, and whatever it might be. Like, there are moments of our lives, and there are opportunities of our lives that we have to overcome some adversity, and we have to overcome some situations that aren't perfect conditions. And I love this story because it says, he went to the lion's turf, and he went when the conditions weren't great. And then the third thing that kind of stands out to me in this story is he went to defeat his enemy. Like this is one of those situations in life that losing is not an option. Like losing from an eye meant losing his life, dying. And so hopefully you and I don't find ourselves in life or death situations very often or at all. But I do believe that it's very important for us to recognize coming out of this story, that very end of that statement. He also went down to the pit, the lion's turf, on a snowy day, not the right conditions, and killed a lion. Like he went for victory and he got victory. Look at this in Leviticus chapter 26, verse 7. It says, you will pursue your enemies and they will fall by the sword before you. Like, I think if I can go back to the sports analogy for a second, like, if you're playing basketball, let's just use basketball for an example, because that's what I said earlier. If you're playing basketball, and you're guarding the point guard one-on-one, -on -one, and the point guard is the guy that's dribbling down the court to try to score a basket, and he's the guy with the ball, and he's, and he's moving towards you. And if you kind of get back on your heels, and you're playing defense, and you're not kind of in aggressive and attack mode, then that guy's going to be able to blow right by you. He's going to be able to take advantage of you not being prepared. And so I think for all of us, if we know that we have this enemy, and Leviticus tells us that you will pursue your enemies and they will fall by the sword before you, like, we got to be the aggressor here. And so what's the thing in your life that you're struggling with? What's the temptation that you're dealing with? What's the, what's the, the struggle? What's the sin What's the addiction that you're trying to overcome? And if you just kind of sit back and play defense and rock back on your heels, then I think that your enemy is going to be able to attack you. And your enemy is going to be able to overcome you and steal from you and destroy you and maybe even kill you. But if we stay on the aggressive side and we stay in attack mode and we go to our enemy's camp and we go... And it might not be the best day to do it, but we go anyway. And it might be a little slippery, but we go anyway. When we go with the mindset that we are going to have victory, then I think you and I can see victory in our lives. But when we try to hide things, when we try to not face our enemy, that's when we lose our battle. Look at this in First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. It says, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. I've already said it, but I'll say it again. Our enemy wants to steal from you. Our enemy wants to kill you, and our enemy wants to destroy you. 
And so I don't know where you're watching this from. Maybe you're sitting at your living room table or your living room couch. You're on the couch there. Maybe you're sitting in your kitchen. Maybe you have this on in the background while you're getting breakfast together. Or maybe you're watching this later and you're at work and you're listening to a podcast. Or you're just listening to this as you're driving down the road or on a run or at the gym or wherever it might be. But if it's safe for you to do so, I want you to just close your eyes for a second. And I want you to picture a lion. And what does that lion look like to you? Maybe it's got a big mane or maybe it's a female lion because you've watched Discovery Channel enough to know that the female lions are really the ones that go out and hunt the food. But I want you to picture that lion. And then I want you to picture the lion wearing a name tag. And it's got this big tag hanging from a collar. And there's a word written on it. And that word is the one thing that the enemy likes to use the most to attack you. And what is that word? Maybe for you it's lust. Maybe for you the word is drugs or alcohol or whatever it might be. Maybe that word is lying. Maybe that word is gossip. Maybe that word is anger. Maybe that word is depression. Like what is the one thing? And there may be multiple things listed, but what's the the biggest word right at the top? Now open your eyes. I want you to look at me for a second. I want you to recognize that that lion that you saw wearing that name tag with that one thing wants you dead. And here's what I want you to know. Today is the best day of your life to say, I want to fight. The conditions might not be right. It might be icy where you are. I have no idea where you're watching this. It might be a snowy day. You may have to go into a pit But I want you to go in knowing that you have the sword of the Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit on you and with you that goes before you and with you. And God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And he's with you right now. And I want you to know that you can have victory. That thing that's been overcoming you, that enemy that wants you dead, you can overcome. And it might not be easy. And you may have to go to his turf. And the conditions not, may not be right, but you can destroy your enemy. My question to you today is, are you willing to chase a lion in a cave in icy conditions just so that you can overcome your enemy and come out as a victor? With every head bowed, every eye closed, God, I thank you so much for the opportunity to talk to the incredible people that choose to worship with us at Generations Church Online. And so, God, I pray right now, wherever they are watching this or wherever they are listening to this ad in the future or today, God, I pray that you would allow them to know that they have the ability to have victory, that, God, you created them and you knit them together in their mother's womb and they were created perfectly and fearlessly by you. And so, God, I pray that you give them the strength and the courage to chase a lion into a pit on a snowy day to have victory. God, that they don't continue to just rock back on their heels and play defense, but they they go on the offense. That, God, the thing that the enemy continually throws in their face, that that they fight it, that they overcome it, that they have courage and boldness to do what only you can equip them and call them to do. And so, God, I pray that, that they're lion chasers. I pray that they go into pits on snowy days to come out as a victor. God, we love you. God, we thank you. In your name I pray. Amen. God bless. What a great day we've had together here for week three of this Old Testament Heroes of the Faith series online. And I know it's been a great day in person for the conclusion of our At The Movie series. And I'm just thankful that in this season of our church, as we're spread out in so many different locations, that we are one church in multiple locations. And I'm thankful that God has brought us together in this format for such a time as this. I believe that together in person and online, We're connecting to people that God is sending our way for such a time as this in the season of our church, in the season of our history as a nation. Uh, And so I'm thankful that you're a part of this story that God's writing. And I'm thankful for the story that God is writing in your life. And I pray that this series has challenged you. It's encouraged you as you searched your heart, as you really looked to understand things about God when life was bringing pain and uncertainty and there were so many things like that, and really to have the courage to risk and to chase after some things in your life as well. And so what a great season we're in. A couple things we want you to know about. Over the next few weeks, there are some great opportunities for you to get connected to celebrate this season of ministry. Uh, It starts this next Sunday with Palm Sunday. You know, Palm Sunday kicks off the Easter celebration 
It's the idea that we're going back to the stories where Jesus was entering into Jerusalem that would eventually lead him to the cross. And so we want to reflect on what Palm Sunday looks like and search our heart as it relates to worship and to be a part of the crowd that potentially was worshiping and just a few days later that the hearts would turn and what part do we play in that. So we want you to be a part of Palm Sunday next Sunday at 9, 15, and 11. And then Easter week, we start on Wednesday night, March 31st at 7 p.m. We want you to be a part of that. It's going to be a great night. It is identical to Sunday of Easter. Easter, Sunday, April the 4th, Uh, we wanted to give you an opportunity to celebrate and worship early for those that may be out of town or have other obligations on Easter weekend because of spring break. So Wednesday, March 31st, 7 p.m. is our first Easter service. Then Friday night at 6 and 7.30 is our Good Friday experience. You can go online to g.church and register to be a part of that night. And then on Sunday morning, April 4th, Easter Sunday at 9.15 and 11 a.m., we will celebrate Easter together. We want you to be a part of all of these things. It's going to be awesome, and we can't wait to be there with you. Here's what I want you to know. I love you. I really, really do, even if I don't know you. I love you. I pray for you often, and I'm thankful that you're a part of the Generations Church family. God bless. Have a great week.